We're going to be in the book of Joel today, Joel chapter 2 to be exact, and the title of our Bible uh, discussion today is uh, the day of the Lord. Again, say welcome, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good time, whatever time you're in right now that you're seeing this, I will say to you, spend a few minutes with the Lord today and you will be blessed. You will be blessed. You might learn something that you didn't know before or you may be encouraged by the word of God. I know for sure you will be encouraged. You, you will see the goodness of the Lord if you spend some time with him. So we say spend some time with him today with us as we go into the book of Joel chapter 2. Maybe you don't know now. We started from Genesis chapter 1, so we're in Joel. Now we've been coming a long way for many months, but that's okay. We'd rather go slowly so that we can learn what the Word of God says. You know, the, the Joshua was told, do not allow the Word of God to, to depart from your eyes. Always embrace it with your eyes. That's how you're going to have good success. I believe that so hard, wholeheartedly. When we spend time in the word of the Lord, we are better off. All right, having said that, uh, Hosea, jo Joel chapter 2, uh, this chapter starts with uh, with what Hosea, Joel called the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. I want to learn about that a little bit. When you hear the day of the Lord, what comes to mind to you? The day of the Lord, it sounds like something good. We know our God is good, our God is love, our God is full of grace, wants to bless us every opportunity that we present ourselves to him. He wants to bless us, he wants us to have good success. But the day of the Lord is different. The day of the Lord is regard, regarded as a very terrible day for some people. The day of the Lord, it's a day that uh, some people are going to wish that they were not born when they face the day of the Lord. It's a terrible time for a nation. It's a terrible time for, for, for a kingdom. So we're going to see from the book of Hosea what, uh, I keep saying Hosea, Joel, what the day of the Lord is about. Joel started with a warning concerning the day of the Lord, and then he moved on to uh, calling the people of his time to repentance. In the same way, we call the people of our time to repentance, if we know what the day of the Lord is about. Then, after repentance, he talked about God's mercy upon the people, God's mercy upon the people. So we see that our God, our Lord is merciful, and then he went on to talk about the blessings of God upon a particular set of people. Blessings of God upon a particular set of people. So as we go through uh, Joel 2 today, we're going to see the day of the Lord, what it's about. And we're going to see a call to repentance that will help us to look at ourselves. And then we're going to see... Uh, the mercy of God, and of course, we're going to embrace the mercy of God and, and the blessings of God for those special people. And I hope you will be one of the special people that will receive this blessing that we're talking about today. So let us begin by going into the word. I want to start with a question, and that question is, is um, who will benefit from God's mercy? Who will benefit mm -hmm. from God's mercy? I hope you know now that everybody, uh, uh, not everyone will benefit from God's mercy. Why? Because we already know that there is heaven and hell. Some will end up in hell, unfortunately, sadly enough. On this earth, a lot are missing, out, are missing the lost mercy, and they are under the cover and under the uh, control of uh, dark forces and demonic forces but the lord the bible tells us that some will benefit from the mercy of god you and i should be the ones that will benefit how do we benefit from the word of god from the blessings and the mercies of god 
Those are the things we're going to look at today. Who will receive his blessing? Who will receive the blessings of the Lord? Well, I want to receive the blessings of the Lord. I don't know about you. I hope you want to receive the blessings of the Lord. So let us find out about these two questions. Who will benefit from his mercy and who will receive the blessings of the Lord? Hallelujah. Let us see what we can get from the book of um, Joel. I want us to start from Joel chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. Here he talks about the day of the Lord like we mentioned earlier. So Joel chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. Let us take a look. He says, Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in my holy mountains. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the days of the Lord. The day of the Lord is coming for it is at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess, gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. A people come great and strong, the like of whom has never been. He says, blow the trumpet. Blow the trumpet. In other words, sound warnings. Sound warning, let the people know that the day of the Lord is coming. Let the people know that the day of the Lord is coming. He said that this day will be a terrible day. A day that is terrible to many people. Darkness and gloom will be the order of the day. It's a day that people don't want to be part of. What does it mean by the day of the Lord? It's talking about the day of the judgment of the Lord upon the people. You see, the Lord is long-suffering, the Bible tells us. You see, people do all manner of ungodly things. They commit all manner of sin, whether as individuals or as But the Bible talks about the day of the Lord, a time that the Lord's wrath will come upon the nation. I tell you, sometimes when you see things happening in a land, you wonder, what, why should that happen to those people? It could be a day of the Lord upon that land. Though they call themselves godly people, true people of God, he knew that they have walked away from the ways of their God. Though they continued to worship, continued to go through the motion, he knew that they needed a change in their lives. So he warned them about the day of the Lord, that that day is coming. The Lord will allow strange people to come into the land to come into the land and bring destruction destruction that that like they've never seen before they will bring tragedy they will allow ungodly people to begin to rule them to begin to create havoc on the land the day of the lord the day of the lord's punishment the day of the lord's wrath upon a nation upon a kingdom, upon a people, because they have turned away from their God. Joel said, that day, the day of darkness and gloominess. Yes, he says it will be like a cloud over the kingdom, over the nation, over the people. But that a, that a strange people who have no conscience, will come upon them 
and fight over the fight against them and destroy them and kill them and do all manner of evil against them. But I tell you, those people will not be coming with their own strength because the Lord, their God, will allow this thing to happen to them because the wrath of the Lord is upon them. Today, I want us to think about ourselves. As a nation, let us think about ourselves. Is your nation facing the day of the Lord soon? Is ungodliness reigning in the land? Should we continue to live as if nothing is going on? Or is it time to call upon the name of the Lord to repent and to pray for the Lord's forgiveness? Perhaps some of us, we may have a mini day of the Lord in our own personal lives approaching. We need to examine ourselves and say, how am I living? How am I living with regards to my God? Am I doing my best to be obedient to the God that I serve, to the one that I call my Father in heaven? Or am I living like the ungodly? It is time for us to once again look at ourselves because we don't want the day of the Lord to catch us on our ways. You and I don't need the day of the Lord to catch us on our ways. Joel had a solution for his people. One thing that you and I must keep in mind is when we see a warning in the scriptures, in the Holy Bible, it is not for us to run away, rather, it's for us to realize that the Lord wants to bless us. He wants to re us to repent. He wants us to examine ourselves so that we can position ourselves for His grace and for His blessings. So that we wouldn't allow things to hinder us from receiving the blessings of the Lord. If you want the blessings of the Lord, it's not enough to just pray, pray, pray. We must look at our lives. We must be willing to repent if we have sinned before the Lord. A nation must be willing to repent if they have sinned against the Lord. What we find is sometimes the nations, they will go into even more prayers, 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 claiming all manner of things from the Lord without repenting. Today, Joel tells us in Joel chapter 2, verses 12 to 13, the need for repentance. Joel 2. 12 to 14, excuse me, the scripture says, Now therefore says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning, so rent your heart and not your garment. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and he relents from doing harm who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind a grain offering a drink offering for the lord your god what was joel saying to us the time for self-examination as individuals I hope that you are joining me. This is a time of empowerment. As, as I am talking, I encourage you to talk to the Lord. When he says repent, I encourage you to begin to pray the prayer of repentance. To present yourself before the Lord. To 
to search your heart and ask the Lord to forgive. Joel said, come with prayer, come with fasting, come with weeping. In other words, humble yourself before the Lord. Let us humble ourselves wherever we may be right now. Let us not say to the Lord, Oh, I am righteous. I have no sin. Oh, I am your child covered by the blood of Jesus. No. The Bible says in 1 John, If we say we have no sin, that we lie. That there is no truth in us. However, if we repent, that he is just and able to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Can you humble yourself before the Lord right now and ask him to forgive your transgressions, your trespasses, anything that is against the will of the Lord in our lives. Just say to the Lord, forgive me, Lord. I repent, I repent of my iniquity, my transgressions, my trespasses. Do not judge me according to my failures, Lord. Have mercy on me, have mercy on me. Let us pray the same prayer to for our, for our, for our, our countries, our communities, wherever that the Lord has put in our hearts to pray for right now. Let us pray that the Lord will forgive the sin of the community, the sin of the land, because the sin of the land will hinder the grace of the Lord from performing, performing great and mighty things in the land. Let us pray and ask the Lord to forgive, to forgive the sin of the land. Whichever land that is in your heart right now, whichever country that is in your heart, yes, you may have ungodly leadership. The country might be going down the drain, but I tell you, the Lord can turn it around. He can replace those ungodly people. You can turn around that kingdom, you can turn around that country, you can turn around that community. You can let his blessings come down upon the nation once again. Joel called for repentance. I'm calling for repentance right now. Repent in your own heart. Repent. For your home, repent for your kingdom, repent for your country. Ask the Lord to have mercy. Ask Him to have mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jose continued talking to the people. He continued to talk to the people concerning the way their lives are going. I wanted to remind you that his main concern is that his people will not miss the blessings of the Lord. And that should be our main concern today, that we will not be caused of ungodliness, because of ignorance, because of lack of wisdom, miss the blessings of the Lord upon our lives. Hosea 2, 18-19 says, then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. The Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I will send you grain and new wine and all and you will be satisfied by them. I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. In other words, when we have repented, when we have truly repented and we have sought the face of our Lord, when we have humbled ourselves before the Lord, the Lord said that He will be zealous towards us. The Lord said that He will pity His people. The Lord said that He will answer us 
Answer us, his people. Answer us with blessings. You will answer us with the things that we need to be blessed. So today we see the need for repentance. Let us say to him today, Lord, we thank you that you allow us to repent. You don't judge us like the world will judge us. You allow us to repent. Today I repent, O oh Lord. Yes, I repent, Lord. Be zealous towards me, Lord. Can you say those things to the Lord? Are you praying right now? Be zealous towards our land, O oh Lord. Have pity on us, O oh Lord. Have pity on us, O oh Lord. Again, the Lord put a country in your heart right now. Ask him to have pity on that country. Ask him to have pity on that community. The Lord said he will send grain and new wine. Now that is the blessings of the Lord. In other words, the thing that the land needs, he will send. The thing that you need, the Lord will send. If you have repented, if you have called upon him and if you have asked him to bless you. He said he will satisfy us. Tell him, say, Lord, satisfy me in your own way. Satisfy me. Remove your reproach from among us. Remove your reproach from among us. Oh, Lord, we pray today in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Joel continued, continued to tell us about what the Lord wants to do for us. You know, when the wrath of God is upon a land, something happens on that land. Sometimes war will come to that land. Sometimes trials and tribulation will show up in the land. Sometimes an enemy that is stronger than the land will show up. Could be a foreign enemy. It could be an enemy within. The point is that there will be a strong enemy that the land cannot defeat. Let us see what the Lord says now. If he's beginning to have mercy on the land. Joel 22 verse 20 says, but I will remove from you the northern army. I will drive him away into a barren and desolate land with his face towards the eastern sea and his back towards the western sea. His tent will come up and his foul odor will rise because he has done monstrous things. In other words, those who have come against you against your kingdom, against your nation, against your home, against your family, those who have come against your life, the Lord says he will drive them away when he begins to show you grace and mercy. See, the northern, the northern army represents those who come to bring destruction upon the land. The Lord said, yes, they may have come in, they may have started their destruction, but the Lord will stop them and the Lord will send them away. He will drive them away from amongst us. In Jesus' mighty name, I tell you, begin to pray, Lord, every northern army in my life uproots, I pray today. Every northern army that has come to destroy, to kill, steal, and destroy, uproot and drive away oh lord drive them towards the eastern sea according to your word and let his back be towards the western sea according to your word oh lord let their stench rise because they are being destroyed let fire come upon them oh lord all those not an army that have decided to come and destroy my land, to come and destroy 
my home to come and destroy my life. Let the power of God drive them away in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. We pray. Amen. When the Lord turns his face towards us, when he turns his grace towards us, he begins to fight our battles for us. He begins to contend with those who contend with us. Say to him, Father, Lord Jesus, contend with those who contend with me today. Do not allow them to succeed over my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, Joel continued. Now we are going to see the blessings of the Lord prepared for his people. As we look at this section now, I want you to have faith and begin to ask the Lord for the blessings of the Lord upon you and upon the place that you are praying for right now. Joel 2, 23 through 24. Joel 2, 22, 3, 24. 2, 23 to 20. What am I saying? 23 to 24. That is verses 23 and 24. Scripture says, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully. He will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat and the vast shall overflow with new wine and oil. Brethren, we know what that means. That is saying that the Lord will make our vineyard prosperous. Our vineyard is where we do our business. Whether you're a business person, whether you're a farmer, whether you're an employed person, your vineyard is where you are blessed. The Lord says, even as he said to the people of God in the time of Joel, I will let the former rain and the latter rain fall for you on the same month. He's saying that he will make sure that you have everything that you need to grow your blessings. That you have everything that you need to grow your business. Today, I want you to say to the Lord, Oh Lord, bless my business. To receive blessings through my business and through my career. Bless me, O oh Lord. It's not wrong to pray for God's blessing upon your life. If you don't pray for yourself, who will? Pray with faith right now and believe God to bless you. Joel, they needed rain in their time because they were farmers. The Lord promised them the former and the latter rain. The rain for cultivation and the rain for the growth of the crop. Pray that we will not lack the things that we need to grow our blessings. Bless me, Lord, I pray. Bless me to every means you so desire. Father, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I hope you are praying that the Lord will bless you. Bless you and bless your family. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, after that blessing, the Lord said something to them again through the well. The time of restoration. 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 Let us look at Joel chapter 2, verse 25. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. 
The scripture says, So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. Brethren, I hope you heard what the Word of God just said. In other words, the things that you lost during the time of the wrath of God upon the land, the things that you lost, the Lord said that He will restore. During the time of the attack of the enemy upon your life, the things that you lost, the Lord said that He will restore. The things that the flying, the swarming locusts have eaten. Those things that the crawling locusts have eaten. Those things that the consuming locusts have eaten. Even the chewing locusts. You know what? They come in every way in every possible way to destroy to render the people of God destitute that the Lord says today that he will restore I want us to remember Job Job lost everything Job could have been completely hopeless that Job remained hopeful in God. Today, I want you to be hopeful in the Lord. Hopeful in Jesus. Have faith in Jesus Christ. Even as Joel spoke to his people, I speak to you today. Trust in the name of the Lord. And the things that you have lost in the past, the Lord promised will restore to you in better dimensions, in greater dimensions, in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says, however, we must ask and ask with faith. Ask and ask with faith. Don't be doubting because those who doubt don't expect to receive what you ask for from the Lord. But believe, believe that the Lord will do it for you. Trust in the name of the Lord, the Bible says. Do not lean on to your own understanding. In every way acknowledge Him. And He will bless you. He will reward your faith. He will reward your faith. Yes, Jesus Christ will reward your faith, the faith that you have in Him. The Father will reward your faith, the faith that you have in His Son. Trust in Him today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord says, when He has blessed us, we will be satisfied. When the Lord blesses you, it will be satisfactory. Joel chapter 2 verse 26 says, You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord to every one of us today. We shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Did I tell you? Some people eat and they are never satisfied. It's not a, a, a good place to be. A good place to be is to be satisfied when we eat. The Lord promised us that we will be satisfied by the things that he, he will give to us. Yes, and from our satisfaction, we will praise the name of our Lord. We will praise the name of the Lord. Yes, yes, he says he will dealt, he will dealt wondrous things to us. He will 
still wondrous things to us. Yes, and we will never be put to shame. I want you to say today, I will never be put to shame. Because my Lord and my God are watching over my affairs. I don't care what is happening right now in the physical realm. I know my Lord is watching over my life. I will never be put to shame. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures upon my life. In Jesus' name, I will eat in plenty and be satisfied. Hallelujah. That means you will not lack any good thing the Word of God is telling us today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, the scriptures continue to tell us in the book of Joel that the Lord will bless us with a permanent blessing, the blessing of His Spirit, His Holy Spirit, He will bless us with. When the Spirit of God has come upon us, there will be no place for the spirit of the ungodly. There will be no place for demons and devils in our lives. I want you to think about that very seriously. When you have the spirit of God in you, there will be no room for demons and devils in your life, inside your body. Think about that. Not in your mind, not in your heart. They have no place. Let us see what Joel says in verse 28. Joel chapter 2 verse 28. He says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. And also on my men servants and on my maiden servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. In what days? In the days of the Lord's blessing. In the days of the Lord's visitation upon us. In the days that the Lord has seen shown us mercy. He will pour out his blessings upon us. This is the promise of the Lord. Have you received the blessings of the Spirit of God upon you? Then you have received the best reward. I say to you today, the devils and the demons have no place in your life. The promise that when you are young, you shall see visions. In other words, you have the power to, to will and to do in your own life, to achieve in your life. When you're old, you will dream good dreams, the scripture says to us, because the Spirit of the Lord will be upon us. We will prophesy, prophesy good things, prophesy hope, prophesy the, the blessings of the Lord upon our nation, upon ourselves. Prophesy the goodness of the Lord when the Spirit of the Lord has come upon you. I want you to just say today, Lord, fill me with your Spirit. Fill me afresh. You know, the Bible says we should not quench the Spirit. When the Spirit of God has come upon us, we shall have power. Today we want that power that the Lord said to us. Fill me with your Spirit, O oh, Father. Fill me with your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. And finally, the Lord says that in his blessings, we receive the ultimate blessing. Hosea, Joel chapter 2 was a prophetic chapter. It was talking about the return of our Lord, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring blessings upon the world, to bring salvation upon us, to bring redemption and deliverance, to open the way to heaven for every one of us. Yes, Joel was a prophet of God who was used by the Lord to speak to us, to prepare us for the day of our salvation. As we see in Joel chapter 2 verse 32, the scripture says, And it shall come to pass 
that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Salvation in Mount Zion. Salvation in Mount Zion. Deliverance in Jerusalem. For those whom the Lord has called. For the remnants whom the Lord has called. Are you one of the remnants today? Do you feel the Lord calling your hearts, calling upon you to his salvation? Do you feel the Lord, Spirit of the Lord, calling you unto redemption, repentance, deliverance? Yes, even Joel, the prophecy, again, says, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. It is a privilege to be born again. It is a privilege to be a child of God. We shouldn't be begging anybody <laughs> to become a child of God. It's a privilege that people should be begging to be part of. The kingdom of God is a privilege. I don't know about you. I don't see uh, the, the royal family in England begging people to become one of them. They don't need you. They have all the wealth they need in the world. They are a royal family. I don't see those in Qatar where the oil money is overflowing. I don't see them begging people to come and become citizens. No. I don't see them in Saudi Arabia begging people to come and become citizens. They don't need to. They don't have to because they don't need you. How? Why should the kingdom of God be begging people to come in? Why should the children of God be begging people to become part of the kingdom? It is a place of privilege. I say to you, we should actually be making sure that some are not allowed to come in with their filthy, filthy lifestyle, with their filthy intentions. But the Lord is merciful. He is gracious. Today I say to you, however, if you feel the calling of the Lord in your heart, that is the Lord saying to you, He wants you to be part of the kingdom of God. And for you to be part of heaven and not hell. He wants to forgive your sins. He wants to make you a child of God today. And I say to you, the Bible said, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is no righteous, not even one person. The wages of sin is death. If your sin is not forgiven, you will end up in hell for eternity. And only Jesus can forgive the sin of the world. Give your life to Jesus today and have your sins forgiven. Give your life to Jesus and make your way to heaven. Give your life to Jesus and become a child of God. Well, what I'm trying to say here is, if the Spirit of God is calling you, do not harden your heart. If you feel nudging in your heart, do not harden your heart. Let the Lord receive you today. Receive your blessing of salvation. Receive your blessing of the Holy Spirit. Become free from the tentacles of demons and devils today. Become one of the children of the living God today. In Jesus' mighty name. We give glory to the Lord. The Bible says, if you give your life to the Lord today, there is rejoicing in heaven because of you. Literally throwing a party in heaven just for you. Right now, I want us to thank the Lord for His grace, for His mercy, for His goodness. In Jesus' mighty name. For allowing us to go through the book of Joel chapter 2 today for giving us a blessing from that chapter for giving us hope 
for delivering us, for healing us, for saving us in that chapter. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us round up with this song. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your blessings upon our lives. We are eternally grateful to you, our Lord Jesus Christ, Father in heaven. We worship you. We praise you. We adore you. Thank you for the kingdom. May your name be forever glorified in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yes, this is Nidu. Yes, on behalf of the Love Divine Family, again, thank you for being part of this today. Now go and remain blessed. Bye for now. See you next time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.